Hey, Steve here, and welcome to this next episode, Processing Subscribers Images. Uh, this one has been sent to me from uh, Glenis LaRose, and she's asked basically for some help with exposure blending these two images that are on screen. So this exposure, which is bright, and this exposure, which is slightly darker. So um, yeah, the first thing, well, actually, before we get into that, the first thing that I've done is load each one of these images into a layer of the same document. So I just did that by opening each one and then copying and pasting from one document into the other. The first thing that I noticed is actually these are slightly misaligned. So I don't know whether the, um, they were taken handheld or maybe there was a tripod that moved. Um, but what we need to do is get these aligned and Photoshop is really good at aligning these images for us automatically so we can basically just need to highlight each layer so I'm going to click on the top layer hold shift on the keyboard click on the bottom one and then go to uh, edit and auto align layers I just use the auto setting there I'll click OK and once it's done its business we should see that these now match up um, so that's a lot better. The only thing is we've lost a little bit around the edge uh, that we're going to need to crop off because as each layer has been kind of moved to uh, line up with the other one, um, yeah, it basically it's just resulted in having to kind of crop in from the edges here. So let's just do that. And now once, well, now that I've got the crop tool. Uh, while I'm sort of using it anyway, I think I'll just also slightly rotate the image because it's it looks to be slanted slightly to the right. So I'm just going to grab outside of the uh, the crop box and just move the mouse up, and that helps to well that rotates the image. So if I press return now, we should see once this finishes processing that it looks a bit more even. I may have actually gone too far. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can rotate it back a little bit. So the reason I'm not using the uh, the straighten tool is because I don't actually know what the horizon is. I'm kind of having to guess and just look at what feels right or just judge what feels right. It would be easy to assume that this line up here is a horizon, but I don't think it is because uh, even though this line over here isn't straight, I think it's supposed to not be straight because this uh, this end of the uh, riverbank, or I'm not sure if it's a lake or a river, but this end of the edge between the water and the land is actually closer than this one over here. So I think that's why it sort of slants upwards a little bit. Um, but I think that looks straight enough anyway. <laughs> Now let's get on with blending. So it's an interesting one, this actually. So I think my first instinct was that this doesn't really need two exposures, but the more I look at it, um, I think this darker exposure here is what I would call the main exposure because it keeps a lot of that nice blue sky. And this one here is useful uh, because we can recover some of the shadows, mainly from the trees over here on the left hand side. Um, unfortunately, we've still got some really dark shadows in here and I'm not sure how much of that we're going to be able to recover. It might not be appropriate to fully recover those highlight, uh, those shadows anyway because on a bright sunny day like this, I'm not sure how realistic it is that we would be seeing into those darkest shadows. Uh, but what I'll do is just see if I can create from this layer I'm going to create an exposure that's a stop brighter just to see how much detail we can take from the shadows here and um, yeah basically using the luminosity masking panel um, which if you haven't got it you can uh, yeah I've, I've designed and developed this myself if you're not familiar with the panel uh, you can download the panel there's a button below the video where you can do that now uh, and in the panel I've got this section of buttons here which says create exposures so what this does let's say I want to create an exposure that's a stop brighter than this one that I've got selected I just click the plus one button up here and it's going to go away and use the Adobe Camera Raw filter to automatically create me another exposure that's a stop brighter than this 
it takes a second especially on my computer which is a bit slow for some reason okay so that's only a stop brighter it's overexposed the sky quite drastically um, now we're getting a bit more detail over here in the shadows not sure if it's enough to actually warrant using a third exposure let's see uh, if we adjust or if we open this group of uh, adjustments here that the uh, the panel has created we can see that the new layer has been created as a smart object so that we can actually come and adjust these camera raw settings so we can actually make it even brighter if we want so let's see how far like if we zoom in over here how far can we really go pulling the details out of those shadows all right let's uh, let's keep it here and then just use it as an example okay so we're this is like plus 2.4 stops over the bright exposure we've already got so okay let's close this up and we'll come back to that in a second well that makes this bright exposure look dark <laughs> okay let's get to blending this image uh, with this one so first of all because we're going to use the darker one as our main exposure um, we need to add a layer mask that is black so I'm going to invert the mask I just added to this layer and now we need to use a brush into the mask to reveal the layer beneath so I'm going to choose the brush tool with a white foreground color and a subtle opacity maybe 30 or 40 percent and we actually need to create or we need to load a selection that isolates the shadows so that when I brush into the mask we're only brushing into the shadows because that's all we want to brighten uh, let's turn the previews on in the luminosity selection section of the panel and let's load a shadows selection okay that looks uh, you know the darker the shadows the whiter the preview um, so the stronger the brush stroke is going to be in those uh, areas so let's use this mask now hide the marching ants command H or control H uh, select a white foreground color again and let's brush into the shadows over here and let's see what happens so quite subtle adjustment just bring in that detail out now we can probably use it around here just to brighten some of this up a little bit we don't want to do too much I'll probably um, do this separately with some other adjustments in a second anyway uh, but you can see here no matter how much I brush into this uh, into these trees those shadows are only getting as bright as they are in this bright exposure so let's see if we can just bring those darkest darkest shadows out a little bit more by reactivating this uh, this exposure that I created invert the mask to hide it and now we need to create a new selection that isolates only those very 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 darkest shadows so I've got the selection previews turned on and I pressed 5 to create this preview um, but I think we need to modify it a little bit further so let's hit the modify and levels button that loads a levels adjustment here which we can use to modify this preview so we're looking to increase the contrast so only those darkest 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 shadows are visible as white in this preview okay I think that will do so let's click OK and now let's use mask and that now loads the preview as a selection I can press command or control H to hide the marching ants now I can zoom in and brush into these shadows and it's really really not making a massive difference but we are just recovering a little bit of detail there and that's you know just being able to recover those blacks so that they're not 100% black even though we're not really getting a lot of detail from them just having them not pure black is going to help create like a less contrasty crunchy weird looking result by the time we get to the end of the uh, process of 
of processing this image. So I'm just going to run across all these dark, dark shadows. Now let me do a before and after on this. Um, we can see the difference that's made. So I think that's useful. Um, it's just going to soften the image a little bit. So this here with those harsh shadows looks a bit crunchy. And here it just softens it, like I said. So in terms of the exposure blend, which was uh, Glenis's initial kind of request for this image, I think that's pretty much how I would approach it. Now, yeah, I will just uh, continue on and just maybe recover some of these other darkest, darkest shadows down here. Maybe some of these bits and pieces up here as well. Actually, I'm probably losing a bit too much contrast over there in the distance. Um, now let's deselect. So I think uh, this is yeah, a really beautiful image and it's only going to take one or two more adjustments to really make it pop. Um, I think the first thing that I would do myself is to use a contrast um, levels adjustment and in the light section of the panel you can just hit the levels one adjustment and that's going to give us like a good starting point. So here it's added a nice amount of contrast. So what what the uh, what the button here is doing is uh, creating an adjustment that basically gives you a good starting point um, for using the levels adjustments in a way that I teach for adding contrast. In yeah, uh, you know, in most of my courses, I actually show this technique and a lot of uh, other videos as well which is to use a levels adjustment or, uh, and just take these control points and just push them together. Um, so you've got the white point control point. The more you move this to the left, the brighter the image gets. The more you take this midpoint control point and move it to the right, the darker it gets. And that basically the combination of both is just, you know, the result of that is an increase in contrast. So let's move this all the way to here just before the big yeah, you know, the main bulk of the histogram kicks in. Uh, this little tiny white strip of uh, data in the end of the histogram, I think is just the highlights in the snow up here. So we can mask that out just to recover those overexposed highlights. Um, and you'll notice as well, these shadows over here have gone dark again. So what we need to do after this, which is a really nice contrast adjustment, what we just need to do is uh, mask it out now of those highlights and out of those shadows. So let's use the panel to load a selection quickly uh, with previews turned on. Let's load a five on the um, on the highlights end. And OK, we can see here that's going to isolate that little bit of snow perfectly. So let's click use mask. Now with the black brush, I can just brush in here and recover those highlights so that we don't lose that nice detail. And we can see there just disabling the mask, we can see that has uh, come back nicely. Um, and then same thing in the shadows. So let's load a five on the shadow end. And we might just need to adjust this a little bit like we did the first time. So levels, let's just move this uh, midpoint over here to increase that contrast. Click use mask. Command H to hide the marching ants. And now let's just brush again with that black brush into these shadows. And it's quite subtle. You probably won't notice it until I finish and show you the before and after. But we are just recovering these darkest shadows as we brush through. Let me show you the before and after here. Very, very subtle recovery, but one that I think is worth that extra effort. And yeah, really, I mean, this is a beautiful shot and it just took that little bit of an image blend and that boost in contrast from that one levels adjustment. So um, yeah, that really is uh, how quickly and easily that you can process a shot like this, especially uh, when you have to 
bring out those uh, those shadows in a way um, that requires like a really complicated and otherwise technical luminosity masking process. You know, the panel makes it quite easy and quick to, to perform those adjustments. Uh, so let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the original, um, already a really great shot with lots of potential. Uh, but then just with these extra three layers added, we've um, you know, brought that detail out of the uh, shadows and just given it a real good amount of uh, pop with the contrast adjustment. So there we go, just a nice subtle uh, quick video for you today. Um, actually in the interest of just making it a bit longer than it needs to be, which I think some of my videos recently have, uh, have done that, let's keep up the tradition. Uh, I'll just add another layer here, just an empty layer. I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool. I'm just going to get rid of these people over here. Which doesn't appear to be working. Sample all layers. Is, ah, Command D. I've still got my selection active, so there you go. There's a lesson for you. <laughs> so that wasn't working. Uh, and then I remembered I still had that shadow selection active. So um, there we go. Let's just remove these guys over here just to make it um, you know, free of any man-made objects or items. I think there might even be a little car over here in the distance as well. So I'll just get rid of that. And there we go. That really is time for me to sign this video off now. So again, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, like I said at the start, if you want to download and get the panel uh, that I used in this demo, then you can use the button below the video if you haven't already got the panel. Um, otherwise, I'll sign this episode off and say thanks for watching. I'll speak to you next time. Cheers.